Hello, this is Richard White and we're going to spend a few moments here looking at how you should do physics homework. We'll start out by looking at the tools you need. You'll need to have your physics textbook, any class notes that you might have taken, a pen, paper, I'm using an engineer's computation pad here, and a calculator. Things you don't need are distractions like TV, a movie, or Facebook chats in the background. Unless you're actively collaborating with someone and trying to figure out how to solve a problem, those distractions are going to interfere with your ability to concentrate. Also, I should point out that the purpose of doing homework in physics is to give you practice thinking about and solving problems using physics. While it would be nice if we could learn to solve problems by watching other people solve problems, it just doesn't work that way. You have to try to solve the problems yourself, at least at first, and then figure out what you did wrong. So, let's solve a problem. Here's the problem from the textbook that I've been given to solve. You'll want to read the problem, and before even beginning, see if you can get some idea in your head of what principles you'll be using to solve the problem. It may be evident to you from reading the problem, oh, this is clearly a momentum problem, or oh, I know I'm going to use energy for solving this. If you haven't yet mastered a particular topic, it may not yet be clear to you what kind of problem it is, in which case you can get clues from the appropriate section of the book or from the instructor's class notes. Here I can see in the book that this problem is based on material covered somewhere in section 5.1 through 5.6 in the textbook. I also know that the instructor went over material in class and have a copy of these two slides that look like they'll help me solve this problem. Let's get back to actually solving the problem. Let me set up the paper first here. Name, date, and assignment go up here, and I'm going to identify the problem that I'm working on here, chapter 5, number 7. I'm not going to rewrite the entire problem, but I'm going to write enough of the setup that I'll be able to look at this later on and figure out what I was doing, if the instructor asks me what I did in class, or if I'm trying to review my homework for the test. Many instructors expect that you'll draw a diagram to help you visualize the problem, so I'm going to do that here. Even if you think it may not strictly be necessary, making a diagram will help others understand your work and remind you of the context of the problem. Write down the known values in the problem. These are usually given to you in the problem statement, although you may have to look for important information from another source. In this problem, for example, they were nice about giving us the mass of the electron. If that hadn't been given, I'd have to A, recognize that this was important to helping me solve the problem, and B, go look up that information somewhere. Let's also identify the unknown quantity that we're trying to find. Now determine what concept or technique you're going to use to solve the problem. Again, based on the fact that this problem is for a homework unit on Newton's laws, it should be relatively easy for me to identify what technique or formula I'll be using to analyze this. Write the formula down in variable form. Rearrange the formula as necessary to solve for the unknown variable. You could plug numbers in directly and then rearrange later, but most teachers prefer that you rearrange the formula first. Notice that I'm working vertically here, usually writing one formula per line. Notice also that I'm notating my work, which will help other people figure out what I've done. Plug in numbers given in the problem statement. I'm actually going to make a small mistake here so that we can discuss it in a few minutes. Get the final answer and make sure to include units and appropriate significant figures. It's a good idea to draw a box around the answer to identify that as your final result. 
It's important to note that the most important thing in solving problems is not your final answer. The teacher already knows the answer to the problem, and you may too if you have the answers in the back of the book, as we do here. The important thing in solving problems is communicating how one arrives at the answer. It's only in that full, detailed solution that the instructor will be able to evaluate how you're thinking about these things. The answer is one thing, but the solution, with all of its steps, is the really important thing. At this point, you can check your answer if you have resources available to do so, and make sure that you did the problem correctly. If you didn't, you should make a good faith effort to go back and see if you can figure out what you did incorrectly. Feel free to make corrections on your work in a different colored pen. When you go over the homework later, you'll be reminded that this is perhaps a tricky point that you need to remember, and it will help the instructor identify what kind of progress you're making. Finally, if you find out that you're really stuck on something, you haven't yet been able to figure out what you're doing wrong, you shouldn't find yourself spending any more than 10 or 15 minutes on a problem. With the exception of a problem that you know is supposed to be very challenging, most homework problems should be doable within a few minutes, or maybe a little longer if you're still learning how to solve that type of problem. If you've gotten really and truly stuck, it's better to check with another student or to contact the instructor or to ask about the problem the next day in class, rather than wasting a lot of time. Working on physics problems by yourself is an important part of developing your own understanding of how physics works, but you shouldn't be shy about asking others to assist you in that process. Good luck with your study of physics.